you have had a long hike in the countryside. Exhausted, you rest against a tree by the road next to a farmhouse. Then a person appears. Noticing you, they say to you, De koude winter is nabij. Een sneeuwstorm zal komen. Kom in mijn warme huis, mijn vriend. Welkom. Kom hier, zing en dans, eet en drink. Dat is mijn plan. We hebben water, bier en melk vers van de koe. Oh, en warme soep. You probably understood a large part of what was said. That was not English. That was 100% correct Dutch. Let's hear it again. De koude winter is nabij. Een sneeuwstorm zal komen. Kom in mijn warme huis, mijn vriend. Welkom. Kom hier, zing en dans, eet en drink. Dat is mijn plan. We hebben water, bier en melk vers van de koe. Oh, en warme soep. Here's the same dialogue in German. De kalte winter is na. Ein Schneesturm wird kommen. Komm in mein warmes Haus, mein Freund. Willkommen. Komm her, sing und tanz, iss und trink. Das ist mein Plan. Wir haben Wasser, Bier und Milch frisch von der Kuh. Oh, und warme Suppe. Have you understood everything? Here it is in English. The cold winter is near. A snowstorm will come. Come in my warm house, my friend. Welcome. Come here, sing and dance, eat and drink. That is my plan. We have water, beer and milk fresh from the cow. Oh, and warm soup. Let's hear what it would be like in Danish, Norwegian and Swedish. Den kolde vinter er nær. En snestorm vil komme. Kom ind i mit varme hus, min ven. Velkommen. Kom her, syng og dans, spis og drik. Det er min plan. Vi har vand, øl og mælk frisk fra kogen. Åh, oh, og varm suppe. Den kalde vinteren er nær. En snøstorm vil komme. Kom ind i mit varme hus, min ven. Velkommen. Kom her, syng og dans, et og drik. Dette er min plan. Vi har vann, øl og melk fersk fra kua. Og, og varm suppe. Den kalla vinteren er nära. En snöstorm kommer. Kom in i mitt varma hus, min vän. Välkommen. Kom hit. Sjung og dansa. Ät og drikk. Det er min plan. Vi har vatten, øl og mjølk fersk fra kon. Åh, og varm soppa. These later ones are probably slightly harder to understand, but they are still quite recognizable. Normally, apart from within the three Scandinavian languages, none of these languages are really mutually intelligible. This dialogue is specially constructed using as much as possible only grammar and vocabulary is common to all Germanic languages in order to maximize mutual intelligibility. However, the fact that it is even possible for me to construct such sentences shows how closely these languages are connected to each other. If you try to do the same with French and German, you'll find it almost impossible. You certainly won't get very far due to the comparatively large difference in grammar and vocabularies. Indeed, all the above languages were Germanic languages. In particular, Dutch, German and English are West Germanic languages, while Danish, Norwegian and Swedish are North Germanic languages. In this dialogue, you can see some notable differences between North and West Germanic languages. In the North Germanic languages, the word and sounds more like all, and the word beer is like ill. In fact, this last word is not completely alien to an English speaker. It is cognate to the English word ale. All Germanic languages have a common ancestor, 
They were all descended from one language called Proto-Germanic, spoken around 2000 to 2500 years ago by groups of people known as the Germanic peoples in what is today southern Scandinavia, Denmark and northern Germany. Over these and the following centuries, the Germanic peoples gradually expanded outwards, in particular moving south further into the land that would now bear their name, Germany, where later the Romans would meet them. Over this period, the Proto-Germanic language developed into three separate branches, East, North and West. The Eastern branch, which developed into languages like Gothic, is now extinct. The northern branch would eventually develop into today's North Germanic languages like Danish, Norwegian and Swedish, while the western branch would develop into West Germanic languages like Dutch, German and English. The western form of the Germanic tongue took hold in Britain around the end of the Roman period from 400 AD onwards, when a large number of people from Germanic groups like the Angles and Saxons in northwestern Germany as well as neighbouring groups like the Jutes and Frisians migrated to Britain. This created Anglo-Saxon England. Their language would eventually evolve into the modern English that we speak today. The Saxons and Frisians that remained in mainland Europe, however, still have their own separate languages to this day, which are neither Dutch nor German. In the northern part of Germany today, a group of closely related regional languages known as Low German or Low Saxon are the direct descendants of the language spoken by the historical Saxon people. Low German is actually quite a different language to Standard German, which is a form of High German, so different that they are not mutually intelligible. It, along with the Frisian language, are among the languages most closely related to English today. Due to the dominance of Standard German, the Low German language is now to some extent dying, but there are still some people who speak it today in Northern Germany. Here, I bring you a Low German speaker from the ancestral heartland of the Anglo-Saxons in Northern Germany. The cold winter is nigh, a snowstorm shall come. Come in my warm house, my friend. Willkommen. Come here, sing and dance, eat and drink. That is my plan. We have water, beer and milk fresh from the cold. Oh, and warm us up. Similarly, Dutch is not the only language spoken in the Netherlands. Frisian is spoken in the Friesland region of the Netherlands. The cold winter is dicht by. A sneeuwstorm so come. Come in my warm house, my friend. Welkom. Kom hier, zong en doosje. Eat en drink. Dat is mijn plan. Wie haar wetter, bier en moke vask van de kou. Ach, en warme sop. So I have created, using common grammar and vocabularies from Germanic languages, what is in a sense a universal Germanic poem. Maybe it has touched on something very deeply Germanic. Would this be something that the ancient Germanic peoples would recognize? Since all Germanic languages are descended from Proto-Germanic, what would this dialogue sound like in Proto-Germanic? When Proto-Germanic was spoken, the language was largely not written down, so we don't have any substantial written record of its grammar and vocabulary. However, by studying and analyzing its immediate descendants like Old English, Old Norse, Gothic and other related ancient languages which we do have written texts of, linguists were able to at least partially reconstruct the Proto-Germanic language using what is known as the comparative method. Our dialogue is likely the following in Proto-Germanic. <laughs> And then we are not completely sure. Linguists do have some good idea of what the rest of the dialogue should roughly look like, but they are points of uncertainty. Although the ancestor of the word storm might have existed in Proto-Germanic as strumas, we are not sure if that would have been used or whether it would be expressed as some derivative of the word snow. 
and the word dance that we see in all modern Germanic languages was in fact all later loaned from French. Proto-Germanic probably did have a word for dance, but it has been lost everywhere and we don't know what it was. When we didn't have written audio records, such irretrievable loss was bound to happen increasingly as time passed and languages evolved. After around 10,000 years, languages tend to evolve beyond recognition, and virtually nothing about the original languages can be deduced from the present languages. Notwithstanding these gaps and uncertainties, we do have some good idea what the rest of the dialogue would be like in Proto-Germanic. What we can be certain of is that our dialogue would look quite a bit different. The differences in vocabulary would be larger than that we saw between the modern languages. The meaning of a word can swift over time. The word house can be traced back to the word huso in Proto-Germanic reconstructed by linguists. However, even though the word did likely mean a building of some sort in Proto-Germanic, it probably didn't mean a building that people live in. Instead, the word used would probably have been rasno. The word soup, even though it ultimately was of a Germanic origin, likely only came to have its current meaning through the influence of French. In Proto-Germanic, the word used would probably have been brothon, which is cognate to the modern English word broth. There would also be substantial differences in grammar. For one, there is no future tense in Proto-Germanic, so will come will not be expressed as it is. How do we know that? Not only do we not find the use of future tense in surviving documents written in the immediate descendants of Proto-Germanic, like Old English, Old High German and Gothic, etc., many of those ancient texts were translations of classic Greek and Latin texts, which do have future tense and in every case they translated the future tense into present tense. Of course, it's not that the ancient Germanic people don't have a sense of future. They do. The modern Chinese languages have neither future nor past tense, but the Chinese people obviously can talk about past and future. Even in modern English, we don't need future tense to be able to talk about the future. I will come is future tense. I am coming is present tense but we can just add tomorrow after it. I am coming tomorrow has the same meaning as I will come tomorrow. So grammatically for our dialogue, the will come in a snowstorm will come would be more like is coming in Proto-Germanic. You can also see that the Proto-Germanic version of the cold winter is near consists of only three words. Most notably, the definite article, the, that we see in the modern languages, is missing. In fact, there were no articles, definite or indefinite, in Proto-Germanic. That was a later development. So that raises a question. How come the modern Germanic languages all seem to be so similar to each other, yet so different to their common ancestor? How come the Germanic languages all seem to have developed in a very similar way? An important factor is that the Germanic languages didn't evolve in isolation. Germanic-speaking areas are very much in contact and close in geography. And throughout history, there has been a lot of contact between speakers of various Germanic languages. Much maritime trade took place across the North Sea and the Baltic Sea throughout history. For example, the trade of the medieval Hanseatic League, which connected northern Germany and the Netherlands, to Scandinavia and Britain, and as such, linguistic innovations spread around. However, not all places are equally well connected. They are places which were relatively isolated through history. For example, Iceland. Let's listen to our dialogue in modern Icelandic. Kaldi veturin nálgast, snjóstormur mun koma, komdu inn í hlýja húsið mitt. Vinur minn, velkomin, komdu hingað, syngdu og dansaðu, borðaðu og drektu. Það er planið mitt. Við höfum vatn, bjór og mjólk, ferska úr kunni, ó, og volga súpu. This is much more different compared to the other Germanic languages we have listened to. 
Indeed, even though Iceland was not completely isolated, it was relatively isolated compared to others. As a result, the Icelandic language has evolved more in its own direction and less in the common direction of other Germanic languages. In all the other modern Germanic languages we have seen, our second clause begins with a snowstorm. But note that in Icelandic, there is no a uh before snowstorm. In fact, like Proto-Germanic, Icelandic does not have indefinite articles. When it comes to definite articles, Icelandic does have them, but they are usually added onto the end of the noun. Whereas in other Germanic languages, a definite article that's like the is present before cold winter, in Icelandic it was the INN ending at the end of the word for winter that is the definite article, and we have no the in front. In fact, the three Scandinavian languages, Norwegian, Danish, and Swedish, also express definite articles by attaching a special ending to the noun. However, for them, if there is an adjective before the noun, then a the like definite article would also be added before the adjectives, just like in English and other West Germanic languages. That is why they too have the in the clause, the cold winter, but don't have the in the clause, milk fresh from the cow. As such, if we modify the sentence to milk from the fat cow, then they would too have the in the phrase like the West Germanic languages. Icelandic is also a North Germanic language like the three Scandinavian languages, all descended from Old Norse spoken by the Vikings. However, we can see how the three main Scandinavian languages have evolved in a more similar direction to the West Germanic languages than compared to Icelandic. Due to relative isolation, Icelandic has notably preserved some archaic features and is grammatically more similar to Old Norse than the mainland Scandinavian languages. However, it has evolved significantly on its own path and become different to Old Norse. Pronunciation has changed a lot for one. And notably, in our dialogue, we can see the Icelandic word for eat is quite different to that in the other Germanic languages we have seen. The Proto-Germanic word for eat is it here given in the second person singular imperative form, which is the appropriate form for our dialogue. And this word was passed down to most Germanic languages today in one variation or another, but still recognizable. But Icelandic had given up on this original word, and instead now uses a word derived from their word for table, which is cognate to the modern English word board. Like the example of the word dance, we have seen how all modern Germanic languages have been influenced by nearby non-Germanic languages like French. English, however, has a particularly large corpus of words of French origin. This is due to the Norman conquest of 1066, which resulted in England coming under the rule of the Normans from northern France. The consequent use of French among the elites and upper-class circles resulted in many higher vocabularies from French entering English. However, since most of the ordinary people of England remained of Anglo-Saxon stock, the basic everyday vocabulary and grammar of English remain largely Germanic. Listen to the following text in French. If you don't know French, you probably won't be able to understand much since the basic grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation differ quite a bit from those of English but you should be able to recognize many of the words, especially from their spelling. C'est un magnifique palais royal. Par tes paysans ignorants, seuls les élites respectables en politique, science, culture et art sont autorisés à entrer. Retournez immédiatement à votre misérable ferme et payez la taxe ou les gardes Exterminerons votre famille. Here is the English version. This is a magnificent royal palace. Depart, ignorant peasant. Only respectable elites in politics, science, culture and art are authorized to enter. Return immediately 
to your miserable farm and pay the tax or the guards will exterminate your family. Almost every fancy word here came from French. You can see from this dialogue and our initial dialogue how the refined and educated language in English is heavily influenced by French, while the lowly and basic language in English remains largely Germanic. And if you disagree, you must be an ignorant peasant. Paysan ignorant, 